Good morning. It's early morning. I just let the chickens out into their run. I have my tool. And morning is a great time to come out to your squash and handle business. So I'm going to show you what I do in the mornings, especially in the mornings because it's a lot easier to get to things. I'll show you. Let's see. You can turn it around. All right, this is my butternut squash. I am training. Turning it up the trellis. Turning it up the trellis. I can already see there's holes in the leaves, which for um, older plants like this, it's not a, it's a big deal. But if it's younger seedlings and they're getting, your squash bugs are getting to them, that's no good because it can affect the um, capability of the plant to actually make food. So, as suspected, I'll come out here, show you. Look at this. Let's get it on. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's terrible berry white. I think it was berry white. But here are squash bugs in the process of trying to replicate, if you know what I mean. Here's my glove. Squish. You can squish them with the glove. Like this. Drop them. Here's the other one. Yeah, I think I squished the other one too. Yeah, I got the other one too. They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what's going on. It's having fun and then all of a sudden I'm not. Gone. Or some people will... Um, Tink, tink them off into a um, container of soapy water. That can work too. They can't swim. But I know of. Then, also, once you got the live ones taken care of, and the live ones like to be on top of the leaves. Once this gets way up here, they start getting up here on top of the leaves. The birds come and pick them off for me. And that's a wonderful thing. Again, a lazy gardening concept of letting nature handle its business you know for you oh and let's see what's going on over here oh i found another room i don't know if i can get to them i gotta go carefully so they aren't startled away while they are still conjoined squish gone and i can drop them to the ground they're not going to come back to life or they're not going to come back to normal my chickens will come and eat them Alright, um, but the other part is after they are done doing the deeds that they do, they will lay eggs. And those are typically on the underside of the leaves. Here are some squash bug eggs. Simple, simple fix. Again, I take my gloved finger, my rubber glove finger. You can use latex gloves if you already have them. Just scrape them right off. There. Because each one of those is going to hatch into a nymph. And then they're going to grow up to be big squash bugs. And they're going to find partners. And then they're going to mate. And then they're going to lay more eggs. Oh, there's a grouping right down here. Can you see it? Way down here. Not hard to do. Rub, 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 rub. Oops. And if I rub a hole in the leaf, this leaf is so large, it's not even going to fathom it. It's not going to make any difference at all. And I just drop them to the ground. There are, um, besides my chickens, there are also beetles that run around on the ground that love <laughs> squash eggs and baby squash bugs. But the eggs especially because they're tender, full of protein, and they will take them off even to their um, nests. Do you see how simple that was? This is my rubber coated garden glove that I was using for weeding the other day. Oh, and then one fell on top of the leaf, so I'll just make sure it gets to the ground. So these beetles go around scouting for food they can bring back to their nests. Also, wasps, parasitic wasps, like to grab things like this, bring it back to their nest so their babies can eat it. Because again, the, the eggs are nice and tender, liquid inside. 
I'm making a mess of this leaf. I'm so sorry, baby. I only like to do my gardening, really, truly, I only like to do my gardening when it's cool in the mornings. Or when it's cool towards sunset. Um, because that is more um, enjoyable to me than doing it in the middle of the day or when the sun is up. So again, you know, the, the more enjoyable it is to you, the more likely you're going to be out here doing things to manage your garden. Do you see that other one? I'm going to get that in a minute. The more likely you are to come out and maintain your garden. When you come out and you're not miserable. And you're not hot and sweaty and getting bit by bugs. And there's nothing going on right now. It's, there's not even any mosquitoes right now. So, see more? Those two look like they might be done. So instead of just coming at them directly, I'm going to come from underneath and squish them. Squish. Ew. Ew. Look, look, ew, 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 ew. and squish. I'm so sorry. You know, I hate, I hate, I really do hate messing with God's creations at all. But on the other hand, I think food for humans is kind of important. And I think clean food for humans is important. I don't like to have to spray anything, anytime. That's man-made, any man-made chemicals. I just don't like to do it. Even if it comes from a tree, like, there's some things like, um, or a plant, like permethrin, I think comes from, like, chrysanthemums. But I don't enjoy knowing that I'm putting chemicals on foods that I might eat or other people might eat. They get cancer later, and I'll always wonder if, if, you know, something they ingested from me or from a practice that I, that I promoted was the cause of them getting sick. So I don't like that. These are on top. Doesn't matter, same process. Rub them off. See? There you go. I know, there's like 10 year olds, adults, <laughs> saying, oh, those are some real sexual terms. If it helps you remember what to do without panicking, then do it. Remember it that way, I don't care. There's another one down there, which is going to be harder to do with one hand. But, I'm going to grab it with this hand. Here. There you go. Not impossible. So, I think I showed you the basics of getting rid of the squash bugs. And getting rid of their offspring, because they're really not good for you. And, because I, ha I do believe it or not, even though I have messy gardens. I have messy gardens, I admit it. I do has some kind of OCD streak in me. So I use these trellises, these um, cattle panel arches. I use like their um, horizontal line to help me keep track of where I've been and where I haven't been. So I'm like kind of like down here now to this level, kind of working my way over and then I can come down here and work my way over here. And that way I don't miss them because they've been pretty busy. When it's super hot out, and because I work full time, a lot of times I'm not going to come outside. I just am not. Like, our August gardens are usually just quite a mess because it's just so hot. Oh, this one. Give me a minute. So, they have a lot of opportunity. And especially, I just, you know, that was three couples that I eradicated. And so they have a lot of opportunity to get to a lot of leaves and plant and you know lay their eggs for the upcoming generations all right that one's done and i put a hole here but the plant is again everything on the bottom coming up is really healthy there's still a lot of leaf space to capture the um sunlight that they need for photosynthesis to get energy, etc. So I'm working my way over. This one's already got some holes that could be from the um, squash bugs. There are other bugs that do like squash, but I don't see any eggs there, so that's good. 
And down here. And I'm going to repeat that. They tend, the bugs themselves, the adult bugs, tend to come out in the morning and hang out on the tops of the vines and the leaves, copulating. It seems to be their prime time to find a mate and get busy. So then they lay the eggs and continue the species. And this one's got some different things going on with it. It's also down low. At some point, I will probably trim off the low branches. Anything low, crossing, diseased, is always fair game to take off. Because it's, one, if it's diseased, it's actually um, hindering the plant's ability to repair itself. And it invites more disease spread. Or similar. Again, I'm just rubbing them off with my rubber garden glove and letting them fall right to the ground. And when I squish the adult bugs, because I'm wearing my glove, I don't care. It used to creep me out. doesn't anymore. Now, tomato hornworms, yeah, they still creep me out. Sure got all of them, every single one. Okay, and they fall to the ground. And the roving... Scavenging beetles come for them off the ground, take them to their nests for their babies. See, I'm helping someone else. Some of the critter. Can I look? See now down here, this one's yellow. I'll actually trim that up. And it looks like there's a vine trying to grow. So somehow I'll figure out how to get it up to the trellis. I think I looked at that one again. This, <laughs> these things were just to keep the chickens away from scratching. The wind, these pinwheels work really well for keeping the chickens away. They don't like it when they blow. They don't like the shiny thing like that. It keeps the chickens away. Also, the vibration of the pinwheel in the ground, moles don't like that. They don't want to dig and make tunnels where there's vibrations. So, consider getting pinwheels from like the Dollar Tree, and uh, putting them near things that are available. All right, this vine, this vine is growing. Where is it? There it is. On the ground, I'll have to lift it up at some point. But right now, I'm focused on finding and eliminating squash bugs. seem to like to get to the lower leaves as much. And again, I'm looking on the underside. I got rid of the adult squash bugs up top. Now I'm working my way down. Oh, there's one right there. Look at it, trying to hide out. Nope, that is a slug. And it's a slug slash snail because it's on the ground. That's one reason you don't want to have your leaves on the ground. I, I could give it to the chickens, but I'll just toss it away for now. Okay, this leaf was curled underneath, so it was not real happy. See, that's the leaf I will remove. Hi, Noelle. This lower leaf is actually bent on the trellis. I will remove that one as well. I'll come through and I'll cut them all down from the bottoms that are touching the ground, and I'll give them to the flock. And let's see. Ow. Yeah, I wrecked my knee the other day. It's about what a week ago, Friday. And for the most part, it's getting better, but the sideways motion is terrible. I can take this back now a little bit. I'll keep this here just to keep the chickens from being too curious because um if there's you know if there's fruit down here or for sure the flowers they'll come and eat them they will love them they'll say mother thank you so much for your snacks you've provided for us 
we will handle this from here. Okay, so I'm going around the other side. I had put this little fencing up. First, I started with those baskets when they were just little. Keep chickens away. And then I put this plastic chicken fencing, super easy to use, inexpensive. And then they were growing out so much, I added this post here just to keep them, um, you know, keep them from getting all crushed and stuff. Because, again, if you're, if you do not manage the leaves, if you do not manage some of the mounds, especially if you're going to grow them on a trellis, you know, it's really hard to see the bugs. And you want to see the bugs so you can get rid of the bugs so you don't have the bugs. Now down here, like I said, the lower leaves don't typically have squash bugs. Ah! Ha! You liar. That's okay. These are squash bug eggs. You can also squish them. Some people just squish them because, like I said, they're full of liquid. But I just like to see them off the leaf altogether. Shake it a little bit. Make sure all the loose ones fall to the ground. So if that one had squash eggs, this one may have them as well. Does not. How about this one? And you can see that they they like to lay them in the, you know, in the corners of the veins of the leaves. So next week we'll start the focus on roots. I'll teach you about roots. Ouch. And root vegetables. And root origins. Things like that. Let's see. This week right now, I really just want to focus on things I'm looking at in the garden myself. So that if you have this issue, you're already a little bit familiar with it and you're not freaking out. And the you is the general you. Whoever I'm talking to. Whoever's listening. That one is not. I know this one has something. I just saw them. I'll come back to it. Um, here we go. And if you can. Ah, look at that. Ooh, there's a lot there. <clears throat> if you can. I'm kind of keep track of where you are. I don't know what's going on with this. Um, keep track of where you are. And so you remember. So when, if you get interrupted. Like. Sometimes I do. Like, if you get your family around, your animals, whatever, you got to deal with them. You forget where you are. There. Come off. Oh, pop off. Check it. Nope. Oh. Somewhere. Um, that way you can come back and continue where you left off. Again, maybe you don't care. Maybe you're not OCD like me, but I would rather do it right the first time than to to keep coming back. Now, if it's a tiny leaf, you might just cut the whole leaf at the base and take them with you. Alright. Um, my chickens like them, too. And if you're going to give them to the flock, try to give them to them when there's still eggs. Because once the little nymphs um, hatch, what the heck is that? The chickens are sounding like they're dying. Alright, there we go. Once the nymphs um, emerge, and I will be posting photos of what the little nymphs look like. They are small, gray-bodied creatures with black legs, and they run all over the place. They're really super fast. So if there was nymphs on this one and I tried to cut it, they're just going to scatter, and it's almost too late. So it's better to get them as the adults, squish them from the tops in the morning. And the eggs, get them from underneath. Because like I said, once they're nymphs, they're kind of like toddlers. They like are like running all over the place. And if you haven't seen them yet, you do see them. You'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. They, they creep me out because <laughs> they look like little robots. Little metallic, futuristic movie robots. Something's been eating them. Okay, big holes. I might find the something and I might not. I don't know that it was the snails because the snails are down at the ground level. Could have been Japanese beetles. Don't know. 
but the leaf is still okay. I still have growth on the vine doing well. So it's okay. I'll, I'll start the top. Like I said, try to be really cautious. Oh, this leaf is not happy up here. That almost looks like, yep, something ate it there too. Working its way through. If you have leaf damage at the tops of your vines, it's not going to be the borer. The borer is going to affect the um, bottom of the leaf, or the bottom of the vines. And then it will allow um, other bad things like diseases and bugs into the system. And it will weaken the immune system of the plant, the ability for it to fight the critters that want to eat it. That's what a vine borer will do. I have finally learned never to water these from the top. Ah, look at that. Ha, satisfaction. I don't know why I'm actually satisfied seeing squash bugs, but I know that I can get rid of them, so it's good. Um, I've learned not to water them from the top because they are more likely squash melons not necessarily watermelon they seem to be pretty hardy but squash and cantaloupes and things like that pumpkins they're more likely to get um, they are more likely to get uh, powdery mildew if you water from the top because that means they're constantly wet and in the heat, you add water and um, heat, you end up with mildew, just like you would in your bathroom. Look at all of them. I think so, but maybe not. Like right up against the spine of that leaf is where they're hanging out. Okay. And they fell on here. Let me shake that down. Um, I think I saw something about that. Like this, this leaf was looking a little white. But mildew will grow on the leaves, and because the every leaf is like a solar panel, it's getting the energy from the sun it needs to make the fruit and grow more stems and vines. Like this one is, oh, it's starting to look a little bit mildewy. So once the mildew forms on the tops of the leaves, it's really hard for the plant to make energy. There are some natural cures or remedies to try to fix the powdery mildew, but if you can avoid it in the first place, it's even better. All right, so it's got on this level. That looked at those. Down here, down here. We have a kennel in our backyard. Well, not our backyard, but it's behind us, north of us. So on the weekends, especially, there's a lot of dogs barking but we moved from the suburbs so it's a lot better than hearing people screaming at their kids and cursing at their kids what do you think yeah see these leaves down here i'm gonna have to cut those off i don't like them they're yellow and i don't like them on the ground because again you saw the snail i showed you the snail earlier i can take these bastards out I just had them secured with some um, stakes. Like they're not landscape pins, but they they actually were stakes that came with some cones that would cover um, that would cover things. So I can take that out. Let's see this one. Look, at, it made its way through the, the chicken fencing. But with vines, most vines, especially food vines, you can be very careful, gentle. Gently, I'm just barely. Oh, look at that! And there's some, there's some things there too. Squash bugs. Gently, gently, gently. Encouraging it and not forcing it and not pulling on it hard. Just very gently, pulling it backward through the vine or through the fencing. Ta-da! This has to go up on the trellis somehow. But there are squash bug eggs. And they look like they're a little bit older. 
they're getting ready to hatch. So I might have dodged a bullet with that one. Shake them so they fall to the ground. So the predator beetles will come and get them. Take them. Ants like to take them too to their homes for their little babies. There we go. Okay. Well, I'll bring you back in a minute. I'm still on my mission. Going downward. Looking for squash bugs. And squash bug eggs. Mostly eggs now. They did take care of the adults that were on top. Three couples. Okay. Another vine. It has to go up this way. Not yet. Okay. Let's see. I think I covered most of the plant. All right. All right. So, again, this is Tammy Lowe, Lazy Northern Gardener, out early in the morning before it's hot so that what I have to do is enjoyable. This is part of maintenance. These are butternut squash. They are the regular size butternut squash. They will be very large. They last at least six months once you harvest them in the fall. Um, sometimes, up, a lot of times up to a year. Butternut squash is delicious. Very, very delicious. So I have many vines. I removed three couples of squash bugs. Two were in the process of making babies. One one couple was either getting ready to or had already done and were just enjoying a nice little rest. And I also removed a snail from the bottom of one of the leaves that was touching the ground. So Tammy Little Lazy Northern Gardener, wishing you a happy Saturday. It's supposed to rain a little bit today. Catch that rainwater. I know we've had a lot of rain, but try to catch more rainwater if you can. Just in case it starts getting dry again. Alright, love you guys. Have a great, great Saturday.